Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the script for my advanced structures. So basically what this procedure script does is it allows you to basically spawn structures without them becoming floating and stuff like that. So as you can see uh, all these trees and bushes, uh, these ones here, are basically using that particular script and it will generate uh, basically wherever there is enough room for the structure to spawn. So under certain circumstances, because um, this uh, where I'm testing for this tree to actually generate, it will spawn only within that area that it can actually generate in. For example, uh, this is a flat area right here. It replaced the grass that I have in my custom dimension and it's basically turned it to dirt and then it's replaced it so it's uh, grass so underneath is only dirt. So basically the replacement script uh, before what it would do is it would just replace it to be dirt. Now this would work sorta, it wouldn't really do like everything that it needed to do though on larger structures or structures like trees and stuff like that under certain circumstances uh, you might need to replace it back to grass around the structure so if it basically has um, transparent blocks like these grass blocks here then it would basically um, not count as a solid block uh, I fixed that, so there is another procedure that I basically added for that particular thing. Um, under other things like this, the shrubs and stuff like that, these are generating only where there's enough room and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, let's go into mCreator and I'll show you the basics of the actual script and then I'll try to walk you through what each little section does and what, how to fill it out. So before we begin, uh, there is a PDF file that I created from the original, um, how do, what would I call it, the original template that I started with. Uh, it explains all the different parts and stuff like that and how the blocks work, everything from the tag support and what the tag blocks do to these and how to use the offset and structure size. Like everything is documented in here. So if you run into any troubles or anything like that, then refer to the actual um, PDF file because it has literally everything in here. Uh, this link should be up or should be outdated now. So uh, don't bother with that. It's probably best that I create a new document, but uh, I'll update that in the near future. But at the moment all this relative information is still um, useful for using the actual template and stuff. Alright so there is uh, outdated workspace I'll update that in the future um, I was just working on some bug fixes it's not too much really but uh, the main things that people will want to use are the procedures there are four of them there is the large script the small script those have minor differences with them those are basically the things that are used with the um, gener structure generation condition. So this is basically what you use for that. And then there is the post replacement script, which helps uh, basically replace back the grass blocks and stuff like that, that um, shouldn't be turning to dirt. So I'll explain that script in a little bit as well. So you will need uh, some tags. Now you don't necessarily need tags, but tags work a lot better than the um, other blocks without using them. So um, under certain circumstances, unless you have a completely blank biome with no grass, no flowers, and nothing like that, then you're gonna wanna use the tag support. Um, tags basically are useful for targeting multiple blocks. This is especially useful for things like the air replacement, which allow you to replace um, things even with tall grass, custom flowers, flowers, whatever. Um, anything that you basically want it to override and count as air blocks that will allow it to spawn, then you should put it in this particular list. Um, Things like flowers, grass, saplings, things like that are all pretty much good for replacing. 
depending if it's a water structure or a, a ground one, you might want to add kelp and other things like that as well. Um, depending where your structure is actually going, right? So this one is just basically like the tree script. It's basically uh, adding all the different saplings and basic plants and stuff like that. So that's where this is going and we're using, making sure that we're targeting air, cave air and void air as well. And then we're just basically setting up the path for the thing and the namespace, which is important. Make sure that you remember these two because you'll need it in their procedures. You also wanna make sure that your tags are set to blocks uh, a block tag so you can actually um, test for the block properly. Dirt is basically the basic uh, under soil block that you're going to be uh, replacing with or testing for depending on how this what part of the script it's running from. So make sure that you have this as well. And the grass one, it can be either custom or creative or your own um vanilla whatever uh block that you want in here it can be but uh, i've just selected my dimension grass for this particular one uh the dirt can be the same it can be your own type of dirt or it can be um i got a vanilla one depending on how you want to set it up so anything is pretty much whatever when you ever use tags it's pretty much dynamic uh when we come into here we have the tree generation script. Now I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, there's a few different things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new procedure and I'm going to show you the script um, each one at a time. So we'll import the one that is the small one for the additional condition and then we'll start there. So procedures small script and it's going to load up all this so all these variables on the side make sure not to delete them they're all used in the script here uh, for enable soil replacement this is important for basically replacing the grass and other blocks in the area to a dirt block and then it can be further refined to update to a grass block using another script in your structure now that basically allows it so there isn't a requirement for blocks to need to update like um, grass needs to update to dirt or dirt or grass needs to or dirt needs to upgrade to grass now this will only do half of the script so uh, the other half half has to do half has to happen after the procedures run i'll explain that script in a little bit enable take support basically allows you to use these three blocks down here uh, you use your namespace and then a colon and then your tag um, path. So uh, that's basically what one. And then you're going to direct your air tag, your undersoil, which is your dirt, and then your topsoil, which is your grass. You're still going to need to fill out the topsoil, undersoil, and air blocks for the regular block selectors as well. Uh, if you're not using tag support, then you just have to fill out these uh, few things right here. But if you are using take to port, then you have to use all of these. Uh, for the position offset, this basically is explained in the document how this works. It um, allows you to control how uh, the structure will spawn. So if you wanted, if you have a five by five um, tree, for example, or something like that, then you want to offset the uh, actual location for where you're going to be testing for if there's a relative spot for it to actually spawn then what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to set the offset to your amount that you want to distance it so for example we need to go one by one for X and Z if we wanted to move it inwards so this would bring it to this part right here and then our structure size, if you wanted to center it from the five by five, because now we just shifted the testing location over this much, right? So it's now outside of the actual boundaries. So we would have to go and set our structure size three by three so it fits inside the center. So that's basically subtracting two and then it would bring it down to here. Depending on how much you move it forward will depend on how much you need to move it inwards. but. It requires a little bit of math to figure out, but basically what happens is this yellow blocks in this area will be the area that it will test if there is enough space to spawn your structure instead. Uh, this also will 
kind of mess up the soil replacement and stuff like that as well. So be kind of cautious on where you, if you're using soil replacement or not in order to run the script. But that's basically what that part does. Uh, again, if you want to offset it, then you would say in our case that are five by five, this would be our actual structure size. We would want to set this to three by three, and then we would want to set this by one by one. And what that will do is it will offset it exactly the same thing as that diagram. I'm not going to do that though. I'm just going to let it sit at five by five. Uh, everything underneath is basically, or anything collapsed is basically nothing that you need to worry about. Uh, it's just part of the script that will run and it doesn't need to be changed at all. It's just there to basically run the script. I will cover a little bit of how things work. So the position is all the startup stuff. It basically allows the script to run properly and it um, the, the settings up here it basically uh, works with the settings so it knows where everything needs to go. So it's very important not to change anything that is above or below the structure size. Uh, outside of that, what this section is doing is it's basically going to uh, check for the area that it can basically spawn the structure in at. Uh, the, depending on if you have tag support enabled or not, it will run a specific one, but it's basically the exact same thing. So this one, if it's tag supported, then it's going to run the ones with the tags. If it's not tag supported, it's going to be testing for a specific block that you specify up here. Um, again, that's that part of the thing. Now, if it is, if it r returns true through the entire structure size, then what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that it says um, don't spawn structure and it's going to set that to false. Now, if it does find a block that can't be where it can actually spawn, it's going to say don't spawn structure true. That's important for later on. Uh, down here, what this section does is it basically uh, does the soil replacement. So basically the same thing. If it's using tag support, it's testing for anything with t the tag support name for your dirt soil block. And it's going to replace it with your under soil, which is the block uh, up here. Um, other than that, the other one is basically just testing for your top soil and it will replace it with your under soil. Uh, lastly, we're going to return true if this structure can spawn. And then if it doesn't, uh, if this isn't true, then what it's going to do is just return false. So that's basically uh, the gist of how the simplest one actually works. Uh, the larger structure is a little bit different. I'll cover that in just a second. I'm just going to remove all this. I'll put that over here, delete that. And then we're going to just import the large one. Now the difference with this one is if we were to open up the repeater here, uh, you can see that there's a lot more blocks testing for the location. Now this is for allowing larger structures to spawn on uneven terrain. So basically it tests for the same level as the block, the block above and the block below. And it'll test for certain types of blocks in those areas. So uh, the first condition tests for air, air and topsoil. The one below it tests for air, topsoil and undersoil. And the one below that tests for topsoil, undersoil and undersoil. So it allows it to give it some flexibility uh, when it's actually spawning larger structures. This is really useful for flattening out terrain and stuff like that that needs to actually spawn in really large structures and such. Uh, there's both tag support and the regular support as well. So that's the only difference with the larger script. Uh, it allows for a little bit more uneven terrain when generating the structures. Uh, the other script that I created recently is a little bit different in the sense that it will, uh, it's post-generation. So I'll show you how that all basically works. Uh, this should be the same offset and the same structure size as your structure. This is important because it's gonna replace the same area that it replaces the dirt with back to grass blocks uh, unless there is a certain condition under it. Yeah, the condition basically works as it's gonna test for the area and it's going to test if there is not a 
block that is solid with the bottom of the block being solid um, facing on top of the grass. So basically, if there isn't a solid block above with the, the solid part on the bottom, then it's not going to um, replace it with a grass block. So that's basically how it works. Um, this allows you to keep the dirt underneath the structure uh, that have solid blocks and it allows you to replace everything else that is available for uh, transparency and stuff. So things like flowers, tall grass, uh, things like that. Uh, leaves, those can all be replaced and turned to your grass blocks where things like your logs and stuff like that or cobblestone or anything like that will basically only replace the um, the actual uh, blocks that have solid or have no transparency or transparency so anything under the, the logs and stuff will remain t to be dirt so there isn't any extra tick updates in your world that are necessarily needed all right so that's basically that one and then the only other procedure in this particular workspace or uh, files is the structure generation condition now this basically runs for the structure and you're going to target your structure script so basically your large one or your small one depending on what you want to use it doesn't matter what one you run in this particular thing but you would select it in this list and make sure that it's set to true after if that's true then it's going to return true and then it's going to basically um, set false if it's not if this part doesn't return true so that's the only difference with that particular one. All right, so let's see that in action. Let's take a look at the structure itself and I'll show you where the things work. So this again is the generation condition. So this is where we have linked the tree itself. And the other one is where we're running the uh, script for the replacement post, post uh, script. So Basically, anything that we want to replace to our grass and stuff needs to be run on this particular procedure and it will run it after the structure is spawned. So basically, that's how all that works. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.